Hello friends, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. I've been trying to film for about 30 minutes now, but either my corgis or some child starts screaming in the background and I have to kind of restart. So we're just gonna press on through all of these different chaotic things that happen on weekends. So hello there, hi. <laughs> Uh, this is the first video I'm filming on my camera. I got a camera a few years ago and uh, with full intentions of filming more booktube videos, but that just didn't happen. So I'm still getting used to filming on the camera while I take photos on it all the time. Um, I am just getting used to it. So I also can't see the little screen on the side of whether or not I'm in focus if I don't wear my glasses. So for a while, I'm just gonna wear them while filming and that will help me get in the groove with my camera. All right, so today is the start of a vlog. I thought I would start with different segments and different things to try to get myself back into filming. And so you, by this point, you see this video, will have seen my fall TBR. Um, uh, Jasmine Ward's new book, is it Let Us Ascend? Let Us Descend. I'm not sure. I will put a cover here. Um, that book and Emma Donahue's new book, which I cannot remember the title of because of course I can't, <laughs> is also on my TBR. Um, but yes, there's quite there's quite a number. It includes Zadie Smith, Lauren Groff, Itaf Room, uh, Yumiri, and uh, Auntie Kim's Happiness Falls. So you saw my currently reading video in which I poorly described The Fraud by Zadie Smith. And that's because this book is kind of difficult to describe somewhat. It's Zadie Smith's first historical novel. And so this is the first book that I have read from my TBR and I've actually already finished it. So I'm just gonna tell you about it and then we will jump into the next book that I'm going to read. So Zadie Smith's The Fraud, um, it's her first historical novel and it's about Mrs. Touche, who is a Scottish housekeeper and she's a housekeeper for her cousin by marriage, Ainsworth, who is a writer, who's friends with Dickens and it's all this very Victorian um, author, dudes, white dude, author vibes. <laughs> It's so descriptive, right? And so it's really, well, I guess I think a, a person on the New York Times uh, books podcast described this book as a romp. And I think that is very accurate. Sadie Smith has a very like tongue in cheek kind of humor about male Vic white Victorian novelists. And so she's writing in that style, but also making fun of these dead white dudes. And I really enjoy that part of it. Like I sort of mentioned in my currently reading video, uh, I did a project earlier um, back in January where I read David Copperfield and then immediately read Demon Copperhead because um, a book club I have for Read Appalachia with Appod Latcha, it's called Appalachian Bookshelf, would recommend. Uh, we were reading Demon Copperhead and as the book side of the equation, I really wanted to read David Copperfield. So I read it for the first time. And so having read that fairly recently, I just loved this. I thought it was just so clever, so funny in a lot of ways. And it's very conscious of what it's doing. Zadie Smith performs the audiobook. Completely recommend because she does all the voices, all the accents, all the different things. And it is just a lot of fun. It is like over 400 pages. So it is like a bit of a hefty book, but it's so worth it. And, you know, I wouldn't have picked up this book based on the description, but it's Sadie Smith. So I knew she would do such a, a great job with it. And I really enjoyed it. There's also like this plot thread of uh, this, uh, you know, this guy dies, he goes missing in the ocean somewhere. So no one knows who inherits his estate. So then this guy, this working class guy from Australia says that he is supposed to be the inheritor of the estate. And, you know, Mrs. Touche is sitting uh, watching this trial and it just starts up a lot of thoughts and ideas. There's also another uh, plot line of characters who are living um, on a sugar plantation in the Caribbean and their experiences um, as enslaved people and their lives and how that those lives have funded 
all of these rich men's ability to create these novels. And there's just a lot of good, great discussion in this book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I talked about it on Behind the Mic Audio Files podcast, and uh, I am on there every month. So some of these books I will also be talking about on there because, again, if you are new to the channel, hi, I can't I'm disabled. I can't read text for chronic migraines reasons. Um, I have a lot of discussions on my channel about why that is, if you like to go back and find those. Um, but yeah, so I have quite a few to choose from. I might have to do a part two of this vlog. But I'm going to start next, and actually have started, I'm about a few hours into the audiobook, is Angie Kim's Happiness Falls. Uh, I read Miracle Creek by Angie Kim when it came out in 2019 and I was at an event and got to meet her in person and I can't remember if I interviewed her for Reading Women or we did a Q&A. I don't remember all of like um, what exactly we did but I really enjoyed Miracle Creek and so I was like I will pick this up but then everyone started talking about this book and everyone was saying that it was one of those incredible books they had read all year the audiobook is fantastic, I will say. Uh, it is stunning. I I want to know what's going on in this book. I woke up this morning and I usually start with like news podcasts or something in the morning or I'll watch, I've been trying to watch more booktube videos and like get back into the swing of things here. But I was like, I want to listen to this. Uh, it's It's so good so far. Oh my goodness. So the other books I have in, in print so far are Lauren Groff, The Vaster Wilds. I have The End of August, which is kind of a rollover from Women in Translation Month. And I believe Tilted Access Press published this in the UK. And so um, it's quite hefty. And in the text, there's a lot of I was about to say a lot of breathing, but it's it's about runners, right? So there's a lot of inhale, exhale stuff on the page. So I'm not sure, like I listened to about 30 minutes a while back of the audiobook, and like it, it doesn't, it's really difficult to communicate all of that via audio. So I'm glad I have the text with me um, to read, uh, well, to look at as well. And then I have uh, Itaf Room's Evil Eye, uh, and I've been looking forward to this book um, since I read, I think it's a, is it A Woman Is No Man was her first book. So very excited about that. Another one I'm excited about uh, for fall is Ron Rash's The Caretaker. Ron Rash is an, a really like legend of Appalachian literature. He has mentored um, generations of Appalachian writers. He's also a poet and he supports local indie books. He's just a great literary citizen, I guess is what I'm saying. So I also have that and that is being sent to me by the publisher um, and hopefully will arrive soon <laughs> so I can actually read it. But he's doing an event down here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So I'm excited to go to that. And I have a bunch of books I would like him to sign. <laughs> Uh, I found a bunch of his books in hardback. I even found Serena in hardcover, the original hardcover. Gorgeous. Sometime I will have to give a little tour of my Appalachian library. But alright, so this is the introduction to the vlog. This, these are my plans. So I will uh, take you around different places uh, over the course of probably a month. So yeah. I guess I will talk to you again when I have an update. All right, so first up is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. I read Miracle Creek by Angie Kim um, and really enjoyed it. So far, I actually just started it, so it's so good. So it, it is about um, a family um, where you have a white dad and a Korean mother, and they are both, from what I understand, have academic backgrounds and studying different things, but for the last several years, the dad has been a stay-at-home dad, in particular to care for the youngest child, Eugene. Uh, he's autistic, and he also has Angelman syndrome, I think is what it's called. The dad is taking their youngest child out on a hike, as is their routine. Um, but the older two uh, siblings, they are 20. They are fraternal twins, and so the, girl is a twin is at home and 
she sees Eugene come home by himself and she hears some shuffling or noise and she figures her dad has come home. But in fact, her dad hasn't come home. And so that is the start of the novel is trying to figure out where, where is their dad? What secrets is he hiding? There's so many questions. Okay, so I am about to go off to an event, an event. So I am, I just took the corgis out. I am not even dressed yet. So just, we're just gonna ignore all of this. But I, uh, I finished Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. Uh, this novel, like we talked about, her last segment, um, features Eugene, who is a 14 year old boy with autism and Angelman syndrome. Up until this point, his family has assumed that he's nonverbal, which means he doesn't even think in words. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of ableism in those assumptions. And so this was the character's ableism, but even reading it, I was like, okay, this is going fairly well. It still centers Mia, our, our uh, point of view character's perspective. So we see Eugene through her perspective. And throughout the novel, she's forced to confront her own ableist assumptions about her brother. And we see the systemic issues that make, uh, you know, Eugene's place in society uh, just very precarious. Uh, we see as we go through this mystery novel, um, him engaging with uh, law enforcement. And that whole system is intensely broken, particularly for people like Eugene. And I feel all of that was so well done. I was so anxious about the representation in this book, and I was anxious also on another layer of the audiobook. So I'm gonna put all the narrators um, and the perspectives that they perform as text. I can't read and remember text at all these days, so future Kendra has got my back. And I think the narrator who performs Mia's perspective is phenomenal. Not only is her perspective so well written, but the narrative performance is phenomenal. I I loved it so much. We also get perspectives of her dad's perspective through journals that she finds, and so a second narrator performs those. And then we also get Eugene's perspective. And I was so worried about the narrator for this, and so when I heard it, I was like, oh, I hadn't, I hadn't thought through this whole process. Who did she get to like, you know, who does she? She probably does not have that much control over the narrator uh, per se, but who did the team, I should say, get to perform this uh, perspective? And I was like Googling this last night and I was like, who is it? And I was so pleased that they found an autistic narrator um, who shares some similarities with Eugene. And he, while not able to communicate uh, that much through words, vocalized words, um, he's able to use a speller um, to assist him, but he is able to read text. And he, so he performed uh, Eugene's perspective. And I was so pleased, I was so happy that they went to those links to provide a truly um, authentic uh, performance from a, you know, from a performer, a narrator who shares the similarities with Eugene. So uh, I'm so happy, I'm so happy that audiobooks have reached the stage that we are understanding that we definitely need performers who are from similar backgrounds. And I'm just, makes me very happy. Anyway, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, it was a whirlwind of a story. Like once you start reading it, you can't stop reading it. And I think part of that is the excellent way that Kim has written uh, ha has written me as perspective. I really loved her as our narrator. Again, this does center Mia's perspective. This does not center the disabled person's perspective. So just as a heads up, that's not what this book is doing. This book is really taking a look at a family who has an autistic person in their family and, and really addressing their assumptions. And by extension, the people reading this book who might also have shared their assumptions about Eugene right out of the gate. And so I thought that was a really interesting way to go about the story. So yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this book. I'm going to be reading more reviews and kind of just taking it all in. I really appreciated Angie Kim's extensive author's note at the end about like what therapies mentioned for Eugene are true and what they're based on and like all of that sort of information, because I think that's really vital to the story and I, I really appreciated her providing clarity on what is fictionalized and what is not and I just, I am, it's so good. So, 
that is the first read of this vlog. Now I am going to go. I think it might have blurred a little bit. If it went out of focus, I'm sorry. I really struggle to look into the camera lens and try to maintain to see if it's focused or not while I'm waving around this book. And I am not, I'm probably not entirely successful, but I wanted to give an update. We'll head into the next book. I haven't decided what the next book will be, but when I have figured that out, I will let you know. Uh, so the next book that I picked up um, was Evil Eye by Itaf Room. This is about Yara, who is a Palestinian American, and uh, she uh, basically had an arranged marriage with her husband Fadi, and they've been married 10 years, and they have two daughters. They live in a college town-ish in North Carolina, and she teaches art there, uh, and she also does all of their website photos and all sorts of things. So she was able to get a master's degree after she got married and doing all of her college work for the most part after she got married. And, you know, so she's trying to find a place for herself, but she and Fadi aren't really happy, but Yara feels like she can't complain about that because at least, you know, her husband doesn't hit her, that he actually like let her have an education and like all these different things. And I was not sure if I would enjoy this book because nothing really was happening um, at all, for the most part. And this isn't a novel with a huge plot. It's more about Yara's relationship with herself, honestly. And so I was at 20% and I was like, I'm not sure I will continue in this book. Um, I was not sure uh, if this was something that I really wanted to continue in, but I, I definitely, was like okay I'm gonna give this another go and we're just gonna listen we're just gonna listen to the rest of the book and we're just gonna do the thing and actually it took a turn right after 20% ish and I really began realizing that this book is a love letter from each from to Palestinian American women who feel like they just aren't enough uh, for their families for their lives they're not prioritizing uh, their own health and well-being they're kind of forced into this corner in a lot of ways um, at least from the author's background and different things and in this case in Yara's case as in the story and she wrote this novel almost as a love letter to Palestinian American women who are in this similar circumstance and so it really grew on me honestly like it made like it just clicked I don't know how to say that like, I don't think this is going to be my top read of this vlog or anything like that, but there is so much to be admired in this book and its themes and what it's trying to say. Um, was the execution really where I would like it? Probably not, but I also think it's important to acknowledge I am not the target audience for this book either. And so with respect to that, I really appreciate what this book was doing. And it was just... Yeah, it was just a early 30s woman 
uh, trying to figure out her relationship and her place in the world. And it was almost like a coming of age story for a woman in her 30s. And that was really interesting to read as well. That was my next pick for this vlog. So I, I enjoyed this. I will read, I think, the next book that Itafram puts out. But I feel like there's so much care and emotional depth to her characters so that it's really interesting. Um, so that is the next book that I finished for this vlog. And you know, I'm like sitting around here like um, trying to decide what the first five books of this vlog will be. And I ended up actually picking something that's not on my TBR to read next for this vlog. And so I decided to kind of throw in a wild card and to see to see what happens. Hello there, friends. <laughs> Kendra here, and I'm gonna say hi, baby girl. She wants to go um, mess with her her brother and annoy him. That is what little sisters do, right? Uh, so today is September 25th. It's a Monday. Yesterday was my spouse's birthday, so we had a family day at the dog park and the corgis had the best time, but today they just passed out. Like just a few hours ago, Dylan was like passed out on our giant couch and he was just snoring away. Just had the best time. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been vlogging for over a week now. I was trying to figure out what book I wanted to read next off of my most anticipated TBR and I think I'm going rogue. I'm going rogue. Uh, there's another book that I am very excited about. In fact, there are several that I didn't mention in that TBR, and I thought I was gonna do like a part two TBR situation, but no, we're just gonna have two parts to this vlog, and I'm just going to surprise you with random books I'm adding, and uh, the first book I guess I'm adding, just assuming there's gonna be more, um, C. Pam Jung's book, Land of Milk and Honey, arrived at my house and let me tell you <laughs> dropped everything to start listening to this book so i'm about halfway through and i am so excited for this book i i enjoyed how much of these hills is gold uh but i was like i want to see what her next book does i she sort to be a stunning talent throughout so i was so excited to pick up this book in particular though because it's about a chef an Asian American chef is working in Europe when a bunch of smog uh, basically covers the earth and only really high mountain peaks are free from the smog. But that means a lot of uh, plant species and animal species go extinct and so she is trying to cook uh, at her job but there's so few ingredients left. She eventually applies to be like a chef in residence or like a personal chef to this rich billionaire guy who has this research compound on the top of an Italian mountain somewhere. And so since she can't go home to the United States, they're not letting in citizens um, anymore. There's like a long waiting list if you want to go back to America. Uh, she just decides, okay, I guess I'm going on this mountain. And then she starts discovering secrets of what this person is researching. And this is like Chef's Table and Severance by Ling Ma had a baby or something. Like, it is the wonderful love of food and such detailed descriptions of food that I absolutely adore. But what's also going on is like, as there are limited ingredients, our protagonist is having to figure out how to cook them. And it's just a very short, beautiful book. I am obsessed with this book. It is so good so far. Uh, is everything I always wanted. Like, this is center of my wheelhouse kind of of book. Thank you, Gwen Lian. Um, But this is, you know, the book I'm reading right now, um, Land of Milk and Honey, is only the fourth book for this vlog. So I'm hoping to read five, and then I'll do a part two with five more. So we'll see what happens. But lots of fun things happening, and I also expect some book mail um, later, either today or tomorrow, with one of the other books on this list that I want to read for this vlog. So we'll see, we'll see what happens then. She just wants to play fetch this entire time while I'm talking to you. So if it keeps her happy.
I finished this book. I don't do stars anymore, but if I did, it'd be five stars. I adored this book, start to finish, perfection. Loved it, very obsessed with it. Uh, the way that we have this end of the world situation, but it's also like very moving and it's not really about people trying to save the world or anything like that. We are following the unnamed narrator, the chef, who uh, is just living her life. She's just an average Joe, you know, just doing the thing. And there's a love story and there's this very, I don't know, it's a perfect, it's like a stuck at the landing, great ending. I really enjoyed it. It made me feel the best sort of melancholy. I, I love it. It's, so far, it's my favorite book of this vlog. I have one more that I'm currently reading and that I'm going to finish and then th that this will be the last book and then we'll go to part two of the vlog, but I got it. I ordered it. I had a really rough September health-wise, so I ordered this book um, as it was on, they had a nice sale situation going. So I ordered this book. Um, this is Learned by Heart by Emma Donahue. And this is about really Anne Lister as a young woman at boarding school. Now, if you don't know who Anne Lister is, she's one of the most famous lesbians in British history. Uh, she uh, had this journal that she wrote in a cipher and had stored in some wall or something, I don't know. And so when people found it and, and they figured out the cipher, they realized that she was a ladies woman and she um, got around a bit. And so, but she had some great loves of her life. One of them uh, is her wife who she eventually, um, they took sacrament together and they're considered married. That is actually more the plot of Gentleman Jack. This is the plot with her, we could say possibly her first love, Eliza. So in, it's 1805, this Eliza, um, she is the daughter of this white guy from Britain who married an Indian woman um, back in India. And uh, so she is biracial. Her mother died. Her dad then sent her off to boarding school in Britain and then her dad died. So she's now an orphan, but he left a lot of money to take care of her and her sister. But Eliza experiences a lot of racism in this boarding school. And this book is told from her perspective. And so she then um, meets Anne Lister, who prefers just to go by Lister, like a boy. Yes, you could say that. Like, I can see young Anne Lister. Just, it just the picture that Emma Donahue paints is perfection. And it's really just this, this love story between these two girls. Like, I am loving it so far. I'm about a third of the way through and I just, all the details about the school are just Emma Donahue doing historical fiction at her best. Haven was the last book I read of hers. I DNF'd frog music several years ago when I, I'm not even sure if I was on the book turnet yet, uh, but I, I DNF'd it, I did not like it. But I loved Haven and so that made me buy an intense number of Donahue novels. And I skipped all of those to read her most recent one because when I heard the premise of this, I was like, of course. But we feel like we are at this school with them, with all of the rules and all of the bitter women running the school of like all the dynamics between the girls, all the mean, like mean girl situation. Like this is a school, boarding school story, historical fiction, women loving women's story. So if that seems like something you'd be interested in, definitely check it out. I'm, again, only the first third way through and they're both 14, I think. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Do I have anything exciting happening this weekend? No, I do not, except reading and I'm working on different things. But when you have corgis, can anything true be truly boring? I don't know, I don't know, uh, but yeah. So I, uh, that's my update and I will return once I finish this and tell you how I liked it and we'll do a little wrap up at the end. All right. <laughs> Hi friends, um, we are on the porch today. Please ignore the chaos behind me. Um, it's such a lovely day. I could not stand to sit inside even to record this. Um, we went to the dog park today and it was lovely. 
Uh, I absolutely love this dog park that we've been going to, and Dylan loves his pink ball, they make friends, uh, and Gwen Lian makes all the friends, and they have a good time. So this is the third time we've gone to the dog park in this, uh, this fall, and I just absolutely love it. It's the most peaceful thing. It's the best weather right now here in South Carolina. It's in like the 70s. Uh, it's amazing. So yesterday, a friend and I went to the grocery store and then we came back and I cooked to oblivion because it's the weekend and I don't really cook weekdays. So I just made a giant pot of soup. I guess it ended up being chicken stew and then I made uh, gluten-free, dairy-free, strawberry almond muffins. Maybe I should do a part of the vlog where I make muffins. I don't know. Are you interested in baking content? I only do gluten-free, dairy-free because that's what I am and I am always trying to adapt recipes. But anyway, I digress. Yesterday I finished Learned by Heart by Emma Donahue. I listened to the last three hours of this audiobook. Um, I listened at double speed and so I just was smitten with this book and reading all the like the last half of the book all at once was just phenomenal one of the things um i love about this book is that it's historical fiction but it's also like this romance it, i mean it is this romance between two young girls at their boarding school potentially Anne lister's first love and i don't know i was sucked in i was sucked in immediately and i think emma donahue really just does so well with historical fiction and so i own a lot of her books so i cannot wait to read more of them i have a whole like last night i was sitting down and making like booktube plans for 2024 in my new planner i bought a whole planner for my book content it's a whole thing um but i'm really excited about it uh but this book you know we have ann lister coming this boarding school she she and Eliza Rain, they are put into the same room and they become roommates. And you can imagine the antics that ensue. I, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a really great read, a really great fall read in particular. So I definitely recommend. One of the things though I will say is that I listened to the audiobook, which is narrated by the person I'm gonna put on the screen here. I don't know why the producers of the audiobook decided not to include the author's note, but the author's note was like several pages. I want to say at least 10 pages. Thankfully, my friend was there, so she read them to me since I can't read them. And so she uh, read them and it includes like the stuff that, you know, Emma Donahue fictionalized. She describes her research proce process. She gives, you know, like nonfiction resources on Ann Lister and uh, you know, she details Eliza Rain's actual life and notes the things she changed for this, you know, fiction, this book of fiction. I think that's such an important part of historical fiction in this context. So I was kind of shocked that they weren't included. Okay. Neighbor has, has left. So as a reminder, here are all of the books that I read for this vlog. And uh, I think that's a win. It's a pretty good vlog. I mean, I did pick some of my most anticipated books for this. Um, so yeah, lots of great titles there. And I will be including even more books in the second part of this vlog for my most anticipated fall releases vlog. But that's next time. So more Corgi content, uh, more book content, and yeah lots of stuff headed your way and apparently i'm also wearing the same shirt i started this vlog in a few weeks ago so you know full circle <laughs> all right i will talk to y'all later bye